Welcome. Today we have Holly Monkel with us to talk about her job as a trauma registry clerk. Welcome, Holly. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for taking this opportunity for us. Can you tell us what your job is and what you do? I work in the trauma registry. Um, pretty much it is, we have a database of all trauma patients that come into our hospital. Um, we have certain inclusion criteria that we go by to determine who ends up in our registry, but it's all sorts of different trauma that, um, I mean, trauma includes a lot of different things that could go from falls to motor vehicle accidents, motorcycle accidents, dirt bikes, assaults, gunshot wounds, stabbings, child abuse. I mean, I mean, every day is something different. So it's a very exciting job. Yeah, and how long have you been doing this job? Um, a little over 15 years. It's a long time. It is, and I enjoy it, so I'm still there. That's what I was going to ask. What is it about the job that keeps you there and wants to stay there for 15 years and more? Um, really, it's just the every day there's a different kind of case. or I mean, you're not doing the same exact thing every day. Um, and especially my department is very flexible. So that's, I mean, one of the, the main reasons that I am there. And I mean, it's been nice having kids and not having to be there at a certain time or work at a certain time. As long as I get my hours in, that's what I need to do. So, I mean, flexibility was, is the main perk of my job. But other than that, it's very exciting and I love what I do. Very nice. Now you talked a little bit about being a registry clerk, but what does that really mean? Like, do you upload them to a system or what, how to give us an average day? What do you do? Okay. So in the morning when I sign on, um, actually in my, in our office, there's six of us that do the same job. So if it's my day to find the patients, um, we go through all of the patients that come through the emergency department, and we also go through a few different lists just to find our patients to decide which ones we need to keep. I mean, there's direct admits that don't come through the emergency department too. So first off, we find our patients. We enter them on an Excel spreadsheet, and then we kind of divvy the patients out between the different registrars. and. Once you get your patient, you just start, I mean, reading through the chart and then go into our database and enter all the information in there that we collect, which we collect lots of different fields. So um, like demographic information and then injury information, where the injury happened, um, how they got to our hospital, did they come by private vehicle, helicopter, ambulance. Um, we also collect, you know, vitals, the doctors that were there, and then injuries and procedures the patient had. So we enter all that into a database. And we also quarterly um, have to submit our data to the National Trauma Database. And then we also submit every month to the state registry as well. And we run a lot of reports that doctors or researchers um, want to know information about. So you've described you're not actually doing direct care with the patients then, right? Correct. Yep. We do not see the patients at all. Um, actually, now we're all working remotely from home, so we aren't at the hospital at all. Um, we Every once in a while, you know, there'll be pictures in the record of their injury, but I mean, no patient care at all. Yeah. So what kind of technical skills are needed for a job like this? Because um, some people are going to be more comfortable in a job like that, whereas others would feel it stressful and not be able to maintain it. So what skills have helped you to maintain this job? Um, I would say technical skills. I mean, be computer savvy, like no Word and Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint. You might have to make a presentation or a meeting or something and then knowing how to work like a database but 
I mean, the database, you can always be trained to learn how to do that. Um, the skills that I, I mean, that we use a lot in our office is definitely communication. We communicate daily. Um, we have different ways of communicating. Obviously, we have email or call on the phone. We also have a Skype chat that just all day long, you can just type, ask questions or whatever. Um, teamwork and flexibility. Um, sometime you might get a report request that they want within, you know, a few hours. So you need to drop what you're doing and get the report done. Um, every three years we have a site visit. The American College of Surgeons come to walk through and go through charts and things like that. And you're under a lot of pressure during those, those visits. So you have to know how to work under pressure and just know how to prioritize and focus and be responsible for what you need to get done. Okay. Now, did you have to take any education to get the job that you're in right now? Well, when I started, um, I went to school for, it was like a one-year diploma for medical data assistant. Um, for this job, when I applied for it, you did not need any really college education. I think you just needed a diploma or a GED. But now it requires a minimum of a associate's degree in health information technology. So, um, and then they also like if a medical background, you know, is preferred or previous experience working in a registry. But yeah, that's now, it, I mean, the job description has changed from 15 years ago. Yeah, and so are there opportunities for advancement if you've been there 15 years and I have the education and I want to do something else? Do you have that door open to do some more things or are you kind of stuck in the job once you're there? Well, actually, so it's kind of hard to explain, but when I was hired, since it, you did not need a degree, I was kind of grandfathered in to what, to being able to stay in this job but I am able to advance up if I get the degree, which I'm currently working on and I should be done in the spring. So I will be able to move up currently, but everyone that's hired now is pretty much, probably that's as high as they'll get unless there is a lead job that opens up and there is one lead job in our office that's more um, not doing as much of the finding patients or abstracting the data and coding. It's more kind of working right along with the supervisor and running a lot of reports that they need or going to some of the meetings to be able to answer questions and things like that. So what would you say a starting pay today would be for someone to start with that job having had some education? Um, I think actually the last I looked, I think the minimum pay rate was $20 an hour starting okay. out. Not too bad to nope. take out some debt and go to college, to go to college and get a job. Mm -hmm. Yep. And every, I, I think almost every year the, the minimum goes up. So it would probably be more than that actually. Yeah. Um, you talked about being there 15 years. So when, did you decide to start that road? Was there another career path you were going down before you started? Um, actually, I, I knew I wanted to work in some type of office. Um, really, my, my goal was to be a medical secretary or transcriptionist. And I knew that Mayo Clinic had like programs for that where they you could get into the program and they would pay for your schooling. So that's really what I what I wanted to do, but I applied and they only accept so many students. So I'm like, well, I need to do something else. So that's why I decided to do this medical data assistant for a year 
And then actually I probably applied for this job. I mean, it probably took a year until I actually got an interview for this job and it wasn't what I thought I would want to do. I mean, when I applied, it, it sounded very interesting and I'm like, I feel like I can do that. So I may as well apply. And I mean, I'm so glad I did because like I said, I love what I do now and it's just not what I thought I was going to be doing. Yeah, that's, that's why we're doing these videos because sometimes uh, high school students, 16, 17 year olds will think that I'm going to start down this path and that's where I'm going to end up. And not always does it work that way. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I never thought I would be doing what I'm doing for 15 years. I mean, there's always, well, like I said, I'm right now I'm trying to advance up. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good opportunity to be in a job that you can advance up. And another perk where I work is they do tuition reimbursement. So, I mean, you're not stuck in your job. You can, I mean, do your job, also be going to school, and they're paying for it so you can move on or move up or whatever you want to do. Sounds like a nice employer to be working for. Mm hmm It is. So looking at high school students, for a high school student that would maybe want to go into this career, have you thought about classes that they should consider taking while they're in high school yet? Um, yep. Yeah. So most, most of the classes um, would be, I would start out with doing computer classes, like different business applications, or if they have any kind of medical terminology or anatomy or physiology, those would be classes you would need. Um, obviously like communication or English classes. And then if they do have any like health records or health information or even coding classes, and I would definitely take those because it's so much easier to take them in high school if you can, instead of waiting to take them in college. Yeah, it does, it does make a difference between the mm -hmm. years. Yeah. So now for just anybody, who watches this, maybe they're not sure what they want to do. What advice would you have for that student to decide what career they should go through? Do you have any ideas? Um, I would say at first it's okay. It's okay not to know what you want to do right out of high school. Um, explore your options and this sounds like a, a good thing that you're doing so they can explore the different options that are out there. Um, I just, you can, just because you want, you decide you want to do something, once you get in that position, it might not be what you want or what you think. And you can always move around or decide, okay, I have this degree, but in the future, okay, maybe, no, I wanna be a nurse now. So you're not always stuck with that one job or that one degree, you can always change change directions, change your mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as we come to close here today, if a student was really interested in your, your journey of how you got there and what you're doing, would you allow them to reach out to it all via email or phone or anything? Yeah, absolutely they could. Yep, and I, I, I have a feeling a lot of people probably don't even know there's such thing as a trauma registry at the hospital. Um, we're a level one trauma center, so we have to have this trauma registry and show this data, otherwise you're not a trauma center. So not all hospitals have a trauma registry, um, but yeah, definitely reach out, ask questions if you're interested in learning more of what I do. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Holly. Thank you.